Hi, I'm Allison Johnjack, the Cranberry Outreach Specialist with the University of Wisconsin-Madison Division of Extension. We have a great cranberry crop this year, and we're really glad that you're going to help us harvest it. If you've helped us harvest in the past, you might notice some changes this year as we've implemented a few practices to keep us all safer during COVID-19. We're really lucky that we work outdoors because fresh air is one of our greatest allies in avoiding the spread of respiratory disease. Um, but we're still going to have a few changes. Um, these are going to include our pod system, our pre-work temperature checks, our um, mask processes, restroom processes, lunch processes, riding in cabs, um, and then how we interact with others on the marsh. All of these are suggestions for best practices, and your marsh that you're working on is going to have specific protocols that help get the job done on their marsh as best as possible. So your manager is ultimately going to have the final word. I just want to bring them to you today so that you know what to expect going in. So I woke up this morning and I feel ready to go to work. I need to consider if I've had any symptoms of COVID-19. These are a sore throat, a dry cough, a fever of 100 degrees or more, uh, an unexplained loss of smell or taste, uh, or nausea or indigestion. As long as I haven't got any of those symptoms, I'm going to go ahead and actually take my temperature. I'm going to confirm that I have not got a fever of 100 degrees or more. And as, if I have got any of those symptoms or if I have got a fever, I want you to call your manager. Um, it's much more important to stay home, stay safe, keep your coworkers safe. Um, just let us know that you're going to be needing to stay home that day. Having none of those symptoms, I think we're ready to go to work. So I'll see you in the parking lot. I've parked at work and I'm going to expect that someone might take my temperature with a, an infrared thermometer that lets them from a distance uh, again confirm that I don't have a fever. A person can still transmit or be sick with COVID-19 even without a fever, so this is not 100% fail safe, but it helps us have one extra level of security. This year, different from most years, your manager will put you in a pod, which is a working group and facility sharing group that helps us keep the number of people you interact with small. Your pod will be doing the same jobs as you. You're also going to share restrooms. Um, you might have staggered uh, start times and lunch breaks to help keep you distant from other pods. You'll be working you know, closely with your own pod, but we want you to stay at least six feet, if not significantly further, from members of other pods to help us keep everyone um, separated and the groups as small as possible. Your manager is going to have more information on who's in your pod. Uh, the most common way that the COVID-19 virus is spread from person to person is by viral particles that are suspended in droplets. You create droplets when you sneeze and when you cough, but also when you speak or shout or breathe. So anytime that you're breathing, um, there are these particles being exchanged all the time. The most important thing that we can do to keep ourselves safe from this virus is to maintain a large physical distance between ourselves and other people. This is not even quite a six foot pole, but maintaining a six foot distance between yourself and everyone else is your most important task that you can take. We want you to keep away six feet or more from everyone, but especially people who aren't in your pod. I'm especially concerned about viral particles when I'm indoors where there's no fresh air to disperse them. My mask manager is going to have masks on site for me, but if I have my own, I might choose to bring it as well. And then any time that I need to be working closer than six feet from someone, and any time that I'm indoors, I need to have a mask on for everyone's protection. Um, I put this mask on by putting the ear loops over my ears, and then stretching the bottom down over my chin, and the top up over my nose. Having this um, covering my, my mouth and nose protects me from particles that other people are breathing and it protects others from particles that I might be breathing. This mask isn't doing its job if my nose is exposed. It's a cranberry marsh at harvest so things sometimes get wet. If your mask gets wet you need to take it off. If it's a cloth mask reusable, store it in your car and put on the clean dry mask that you have as a backup. If it's a disposable mask, make sure that you're disposing of it in a trash can so that it doesn't end up anywhere we don't want it to. Another option, if you're working somewhere where you're mostly isolated, but from time to time someone comes up to give you instructions, you might choose to wear a face shield. Um, that way you can be working with your face free most of the time, but when someone approaches, you can put down the shield and interact with them. Um, if this is not as protective as a mask because air can still come around through the sides, but it's better than nothing 
It can also be an extra protection if you're someplace with a lot of spray from keeping your mask for keeping your mask dry. Because the COVID-19 virus can be transmitted through fecal matter and because flushing toilets aerosolize fecal matter, it's really important that you only use the bathroom designated to your pod. Um, even if another one's closer, stick with the one that you were assigned. We are going to have the windows open. We're gonna have a fan blowing air um, out to keep everything as fresh as we can. And if we have porta potties, we're gonna ask that you prop the porta potty door open whenever it's not in use. Of course, you can shut it during use. We also ask that you shut the lid of the toilet before flushing. And of course, that you wash your hands after using the restroom the same as you would every year. Share vehicles only with people who are in your pod. Do not enter a car or truck that has someone from another pod in it. Also, when it's safe to do so and legal to do so, it's better from a COVID standpoint to have people riding in the bed of the truck rather than cramming a bunch of people in the cabs. If you do have to have a lot of people in the cab, um, be sure that everyone's wearing masks and be sure that you have the windows rolled down. If it's too cold to have the windows rolled down, roll down the windows anyway, but blast the heat so that air as possible is being sent out of the truck as fast as possible. Had a good day at work so far and now it's time for lunch. While we in prior years might have eaten together as a group, this year it's safest to eat in your own car. If you'd rather eat outside, I need you to sit much more than six feet apart from other people. When you're eating, it's impossible to wear a mask, so you need to maintain that physical distance for safety. Um, your car is really the best bet, though. The safest way to use cab detractors is to dedicate one employee to one tractor and not switch. Um, if you do have to switch, open up all the windows. Uh, if it's possible to drive with the door open safely, drive with the door open. Um, as, as much as you can though, avoid trading out people who are driving in a specific cab. Thanks for joining us to help harvest the 2020 cranberry crop. It's gonna look a little different than normal, but there are ways that we can eliminate the risk that doesn't bring benefit while still getting the job done. We've gone over how we'll check for symptoms, how we will physically distance and wear masks when we don't have good enough airflow. Um, we've been over restroom use and lunch breaks, um, when we need to share rides to places and how to swap, switch out between cabs. And there's just two more things that we want to talk about um, before you're ready to start harvesting. The first is interacting with tourists. This is a really beautiful process. We're lucky to get to be out in it every day and they're interested to come see it and we can understand that, but we have to help them remember to keep a really far distance. If they can hear you, remind them that staying safe safely away is the best way that they can watch the process without risking themselves or your health. The same applies to truckers. Truckers are here to bring our product from our farm to our processors, but because they are traveling a lot more, it's a lot more difficult to contact Trace, just someone in your pod, compared with a trucker and everyone else that they might have interacted with. This brings us to our last point, which is what will happen if someone is to test positive. We have all of your contact information, so if someone lets us know about a positive test at, in the evening, we will call you and let you know. Um, if someone is to test positive and we find out during the workday, we'll let you know immediately. Different counties have different regulations about who needs to self-quarantine if they've been in contact with someone who's tested positive, um, and so your manager is going to have more information about that. Thank you for joining us to harvest the 2020 cranberry crop. Everything in life has risks, and of course farm work is no exception. We understand a lot more about the COVID-19 virus now than we did this spring, and that information is helping us to eliminate the risk that doesn't bring benefit while still uh, keeping ourselves and each other safe and harvesting the 2020 crop. Thanks for joining us.